Shortly after speaking to Ward, Democratic Chairwoman Felicia Rodolini joined us. Rodolini ran twice for Arizona Attorney General, losing to her Republican challengers in 2010 and 2014. After Democrats scored significant wins in state and federal races last November, the party voted to keep Rodolini as its leader for another two years. One thing that's clear, she's kept her foot on the gas. When it comes to 2020, the, the two big marquee elections are the presidential election and the U.S. Senate election. Does that make it more difficult for you as head of the Democratic Party? You have to split your, your time, your allegiances, if you will, between the races, or is it just full speed ahead? It's full speed ahead. And that's why we're starting so early in 2019, to make sure that we have what I'm calling the Arizona plan, the Democratic Arizona plan, where we have a, a base of volunteers, a base of organizers that are literally preparing for what's ahead in 2020 when we do have a robust U.S. Senate race going on and a presidential race going on, where we know funds, resources, people are going to come into the state to help Democrats win. Let's talk about that Senate race. Right now we have one Democrat in it, Mark Kelly, running against Martha McSally. It's an interesting race though, because even though McSally is the incumbent, she was appointed. So does that take some of the incumbency away and give you all and Mark if, if Kelly, if he's the only candidate, an advantage? Since Martha McSally was rejected by the majority of voters in 2018, I have a really hard time calling her an incumbent. She was really appointed to do the will and the bidding of Mitch McConnell uh, and the Republican far-right senators. So from our perspective, she is an easy target. She is very vulnerable. She ran a very divisive campaign. If we look at 2018, Senator Sinema won, Governor Ducey won, both statewide races. Governor Ducey had to have pulled some Democrats. Senator Sinema had to have pulled some Republicans. How do you bring the Democrats who went for Governor Ducey home, and how do you keep those Republicans who went for Senator Sinema in that Democratic tent? Well, you're right. The registration is close, and in the middle are independents. And to win statewide in Arizona, it's really about appealing to our independent voters, as well as Democrats and Republicans. I agree with you. Anyone who wins statewide has to have a fair amount of Republicans, Democrats, and independents voting for them, which means they have to appeal and they have to have values and messaging that matches what Arizonans care about. Right now, Democrats are the ones, in my opinion, who are much clearer in their intent and their advocacy to fight for what's important to Arizonans. Health care that's affordable and accessible. Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Good public education that is going to make sure every kid has the opportunities that should be afforded to them. Those are democratic values and they're the majority values of Arizonans. What do you do as party leader for the Democrats if in this Senate race somebody comes to you in the, in the coming weeks and says, I want to run for U.S. Senate. I know Mark Kelly's raised more than a million dollars, but I want to run for U.S. Senate and I want to run as a Democrat. Do you say, no, 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 we can't wound ourselves with a primary, or do you just sit back and say, however the chips fall in the voters' hands? Well, that conversation happened at lunch on Monday. I met with a gentleman who was thinking very seriously about running for the U.S. Senate until Mark Kelly got in the race. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing folks understanding the importance and the urgency of electing a Democrat in 2020. We're seeing the fact that someone like Mark Kelly, who's a leader, um, who represents the values that are consistent with Arizonans and Americans and has a great shot at winning, is a veteran, military combat, and can raise money, is a candidate that's formidable. So there is a lot of natural opportunity for folks to reconsider, and that's making my job a little bit easier. Now we have to ask, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't, was that Ruben Gallego you were talking with or somebody else? Now Ruben and I have had plenty of conversations and he is a formidable candidate on his own. He is a proven winner. 
He has um, been in Congress, and those conversations with Rubin have been very different. Um, I believe he is preparing a candidacy and will be letting us know what he's going to be doing very soon. I'm a former candidate. Yes. I ran in 2010. I had a very robust primary against two very beloved uh, Democrats, one from Tucson and one from Phoenix, um, both with um, a history in democratic politics. And the best thing I found was that a, a primary prepares you. A primary makes sure the media folks pay attention to the Democrats. Uh, it makes us all aware of the the values, the pros and cons of a candidate, and gives us a chance to really vet those candidates. So I'm not afraid of a primary. In fact, I'm encouraging opportunities for all of our Democrats at all levels of government to get involved. And if it means they have a primary, then the best candidate will come out. All right. Thanks for sitting down with us. It's my pleasure.